Hi, I'm Tom Cairns. Thank you for coming. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be there with you. As a flight attendant once said when we landed, be careful opening the overhead bins because shift happens. Well, life has happened for me and I'm not able to be there. That's the bad news. The good news is I was able to uh, pre-record my presentation for you, which assures you that I fall within the time limits uh, provided. So let's look at the parable of the sower of faith learning application. Uh, this began uh, in 2015 as an attempt by me to uh, model and provide a practical application of the principles of situational leadership theory using the parable of the sower. Uh, so it was a faith learning integration lecture that since has been delivered to over 500 graduate business students and also afforded the students their own opportunity to develop their own faith learning application using one of the principles that we were studying. So the approach to the parable is predicated upon, first and foremost, the reliability and relevance of Scripture to inform our Christian worldview. And for that, then we turn to a theological and biblical understanding of the parable itself, and then how the understanding of the parable uh, would affect or influence the practice of leadership, and in this case, the specific practice of situational leadership theory. So the reliability and relevance of Scripture, we draw from uh, Paul's writing in 2 Timothy, all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching so that he or she may be complete, equipped for every good work. And Paul chose the words breathed out by God very purposefully, for in the book of Genesis, where God breathed life into Adam, so does God breathe life into every aspect of our life. And for a theological and biblical understanding of the parable, I turn to the farm sermons by Charles Spurgeon, a series of sermons that he uh, put together uh, for his congregation that were primarily made up of farmers. And so then I looked at uh, Hersey and Blanchard's situational leadership theory and applied uh, the understanding of the parable, which specifically looking at the soil and how that affected uh, the practice of leadership uh, theory uh, and behavior. So the reliability and relevance of scripture. Uh, I draw from uh, Richard Tuning saying the Bible's relevant if a man or woman believes it is relevant to them. And it sounds rather simple, but it is uh, because either you believe the Bible or you don't. You're either a person of faith or you're not. And we accept scripture uh, on faith and we believe that it's true and that it's relevant for us. I spend more time in the paper building a foundation on the reliability and relevance of scripture should you so want. But since this is a Christian conference, I figured uh, that uh, we all would accept the scripture as being truth. So I mentioned again the farm sermons of Charles Spurgeon. Uh, and for that, what was so special about farmers that uh, Spurgeon uh, found, and that one is that the environment in which they toiled and worked and labored was one that showed God's creation and just uh, um, the, the miracle of, of growth, if you would. And so he felt that God's presence was evident all, all around in their work environment. And then looking at where God spoke to men uh, at the bush, the brook, the well, and in the field, uh, how appropriate would it be that God would speak to farmers as they uh, toiled uh, in their uh, field as well. And he felt also that they had a sensitive heart, one that was willing to be taught, because as they tilled the soil, prepared it for seed, uh, they, they understood those aspects, so they had more of a sensitivity of growth as well. And so then also looking at the mystery of uh, the gospel, that uh, just some of the aspects of uh, their own occupation out of that uh, would also give them an opportunity to perhaps be more sensitive to this mystery concerning God. So let's look at this, a brief summary of the parable itself. A sower went out to sow his seed. Some fell by the wayside, other fell by uh, rocky soil, and other fell by thorns, and then other fell by good soil. And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And Spurgeon, when he was preaching this to his, again, agrarian congregation, uh, he uh, felt he could relate this and said to his uh, individuals, and Spurgeon was really noted for being able to relate well to the people that he was speaking to that in ways that they would understand. 
And, and that was so much true of Jesus himself as he spoke uh, to individuals uh, on the mountainside uh, that he related to them in parables and uh, that one that they would also understand because they too were an agrarian society. And so these four types of soil represented in the parable uh, were, uh, as Spurgeon would relate to his congregation saying, these are the presence of your heart and mind. This is how you will receive the message of salvation and the message of gospel that I am to share with you. And that first soil that fell, uh, seed that fell on the wayside was that there are those of you listening who have no intent to respond to this message for your hearts are hardened. And uh, it's been uh, evident as, uh, again, traveled upon, trodden down, your hearts have become hard. Then there are those of you that will be easily moved by the message of the gospel, evident in uh, uh, areas where uh, flowers and other things have grown up amongst rocks, but unable to really fully uh, develop in, in an area because of the rocks uh, as well. But so you will uh, respond, but then not be able to develop your uh, faith. And then others of you will hear the message, but will be choked out by life itself and will not be able to grow. And then there's good soil, and that soil was made good by the grace of God, and you will respond uh, to this message. So the important takeaway here is that good soil does not just happen. So let's take a look at our understanding of the soil a little bit further and how it informs our uh, understanding and influence of situational leadership theory. So as we, as we look at the, the soil, I want to go into a little more detail for you. The first soil is the hard soil. Uh, and I'll look briefly at uh, Hersey and Blanchard's situational leadership theory and how uh, the understanding of the soil aligns to their theory of uh, follower readiness and leadership style. And essentially, there were four uh, levels of readiness that uh, Hersey and Blanchard identified uh, where followers would be ready to follow a leader. And, uh, and so let's see how they, they relate. The hard soil relates to someone who is unable and unwilling uh, to follow. And the leadership style that's necessary to uh, help this individual is one of telling, where you focus more on task and less on relationship. And a farmer, when they encounter hard soil, what they do is break it up because they need to add some things uh, into it to make that soil uh, responsive and receptive. So an effective leader, when it comes to managing individuals that are low in follower readiness, uh, is one there where they're going to need to provide more guidance and more direction and where they need to create an environment of trust and, and also looking at uh, why are people uh, resisting uh, change and identifying those elements. And then we turn to rocky soil, and rocky soil is represented where a farmer uh, needs to repair soil because there's obviously not enough soil there. It's been eroded, uh, perhaps by uh, the elements uh, there. Uh, you can see growth, uh, but you don't see full growth. And so for that, uh, an effective leader who encounters employees who uh, are low to moderate in their readiness, where they're unable, but they're willing, the response that an effective leader would have there is they would look to develop their uh, followers and then with that also through persuasion and clarity of direction. So really selling them on the idea uh, of what they want them to do and influencing them to, to want to do it. So they focus more on tasks as well as developing relationships. In thorny soil, we, I like this area uh, specifically a little more because weeds tell you what's lacking in your soil. And uh, sometimes uh, we don't always know in our workforce what's lacking. Uh, what, do we, what do we need to do? Uh, and in soil, uh, it actually tells you when you test that soil. So along with that, uh, it takes more of a coaching style, uh, focus less on task and more on relationship, uh, where we have employees who are able but they're unwilling for some, for some reason. And as leaders, uh, we need to uh, identify what those are and try to engage our employees more and make adjustments as necessary. And so we want to engage in a style where we're building relationships, collaborating and facilitating 
a discussion and dis and discerning what are the changes that we need to make. And so then we come to good soil. And with good soil, uh, we need to make sure that we encourage and develop and enable that environment to continue to uh, flourish. And with that, uh, it comes to managing individuals and delegating tasks to them. Uh, and where they're, they're ready and able to go off and do them, we just need to trust them and be open in our communication. And then also provide uh, guidance as to what we want to do, but the direction in that and the focus we give to them, but trust them for their accountability and responsibility in completing the task that uh, we put before them. So this is soil that uh, obviously can erode, uh, but we need to keep and develop it. So what does uh, all this say to us? One is as we look at the soil and we relate it to follower readiness and our leadership style that we need to make accordingly, we need to practice good soil management. I mentioned at the outset of this presentation that I also gave students an opportunity to develop their own faith learning application. And here's just a sample of a few uh, that came from my last class, most recent class, where uh, one student uh, developed a scripture that really talked about servant leadership and Jesus radically reimagined human leadership for us. And then one that I really thought was interesting, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. And that uh, let it lend itself to managing by walking around. And then another one, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. And what is our communication, uh, effective communication in the workplace? And then one that actually just drew out a little bit more from the parable itself, uh, drawing from the what is known as the golden rule. So in everything you do, and so uh, do it uh, as though uh, you're doing it unto yourself. Uh, so no matter what the condition of the soil, the theme that runs through that parable, an effective leader must support, and again, look at good soil management. So lastly, uh, to the farmer and each of us, I want to close with a, a brief video. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay, wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40 hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed and rake and disc and plow and plant and tie the fleece and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bale a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing who would laugh and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. 